Hello everybody, Miss Debbie here. Nice to see you this evening. Uh, the days are getting shorter. The nights are kind of huddling in on top of us more quickly than we'd like. It probably starts drawing into evening around three o'clock soon after you're getting out of school um, or coming in from the playground. And that's, that's just winter coming. That's all. Um, it's a whole, it's a different season, you know, so uh, right now we enjoy the autumn with its beautiful colors and crunchy leaves and the smell of uh, nuts and, you know, wet wood and, and leaves. And, um, and we look forward to playing in winter with its sparkling crystal skies and crisp air. Um, but right now we have, um, we have a nice, warm, cozy story time, bedtime story time to kind of push you off into your dreamland and, and settle you in from your lovely day. So let's get started. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you today? I hope you're fine. I hope you had a wonderful day. I had a pretty good day. I, I worked and I had two nice walks with my doggy and um, I had a nice supper. So I'm ready to to snuggle into bed right after, right after you do. I like my bed. I like hug and kiss my pillow when I <laughs> crawl into bed. <laughs> All right. So let's start with our... Um, little finger play song. It's called Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away, run away. Where is tall lady? Where is tall lady? Here I am, here I am. How are you today, ma'am? Very well, I thank you. Stride away, stride away. Where is ring man? Where is ring man? Here I am, here I am. I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away. Run away. Where is Pinky? Where is Pinky? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, dude? Very well, I thank you. Skip away. Skip away. All right. Now squeeze, squeeze all of your fingers. Just give them a squeeze one by one, all 10 of them. We could do it while we count, but we've had a long day. Shake them out. Oh. Like I said, these, these hands are going to work hard tonight because they're going to help you go sleepy by and, and curl up. So they need to be treated kindly. So our first book this evening is one that I really, really love. I've been reading this just to myself, because it's a beautiful story. It's called 10 Beautiful Things by Molly Beth Griffin and illustrated by Maribel Lechuga. So the story is beautiful. The pictures are simply wonderful. And I hope you pick this book up at your library because I'm going to return it in the morning. <laughs> See, that's a red-winged blackbird. You can see them. They like to live in the fields. Um, you'll, you'll see them around. I, I see them mostly in the spring and summer, and they make this beautiful trilling noise. Um, you can always tell, tell a red when a red wing is around. Ten beautiful things. So we don't know what's going on in this story, but somehow a little girl is alone and she's going to live with her grandma. So here is grandma packing the suitcase on top of the car and the little girl is, is just sitting with her stuff. 
<clears throat> Lily ran her finger across the Iowa map and X'd an X marked Graham's house on an empty patch of land, Lily's new home. Is it scary to go to a new home? You bet. Graham's tires hummed against the pavement. Lily felt the vibration in her hollow chest. Let's try to find 10 beautiful things along the way, Graham said. Looks like they're starting out at night. So I want to show you these beautiful pictures. Look at the starry night and the city in the background. Lots of stars. Little girl in the back seat. Grandma's driving. Cars loaded with stuff. Oh, those are fireflies and a kitty cat. Lily turned her eyes to the window. There's nothing beautiful here, she said. She struggled to fold the map so it nestled just right. You'd be surprised, Graham said. And sure enough, at that very moment, the sun broke over the long horizon. Lily gasped. There's number one, she cried. Right you are, Lily, said Graham. Fence posts, fence posts rushed past. Graham flipped on the radio, trying to fill the silence. Lily felt the complaints starting in her belly again, coming up her throat and nearly out her mouth. But then Graham shouted, number two. A wind farm had sprouted in the field beside the freeway. Spinning windmill blades gleamed in the morning sun. Did you ever see a bunch of windmills? Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. They are so awesome. I hope you get to see them. I don't know if there's any in New Jersey. Pennsylvania, yeah. Oh, there's that red light. <laughs> Lily concentrated on the game and found number three really fast. A red-winged blackbird perched on a swaying stalk of last year's corn. It was dark and bright all at once. Its beak opened wide in a song they couldn't hear. Later, Graham signaled and turned the car onto a smaller road. Two more highways to go, she said. Lily popped a handful of crackers into her mouth, but food didn't fill up her hollow places. Graham cracked her window and in rushed air and sound and cold. What do you think the sound of the geese make? Honk, honk. They crossed a bridge and Graham chose number four, the gurgly sound of a melting creek. Lily dozed off. She woke up when Grant, Graham tapped her knee and pointed out a falling apart barn. That's not pretty, Lily said. That can't count. We're not looking for pretty. We want beautiful, said Graham. So it stood halfway to 10. At a rest area, Lily bounded out of the car while Graham stretched her creaky body. Lily picked number six, the smell of mud, she said, inhaling. Graham shut her eyes and nodded slowly. It's earthy and rich, she said. I'd never really noticed. I'll bet you could smell mud right now in this beautiful season of ours. Lily breathed in the mud smell and focused on just that. It poured itself into some of the empty spaces in her. Back on the road again. On the road again. Sounds like a Willie Nelson song. Back, 
Back on the road again, the car seemed smaller. The humming in Lily had stopped, but her legs wanted to sprawl and her stomach was getting queasy. We're on a roll now, Graham said, and she was right about that. Seven and eight were easy. A cloud shaped like a swan and a little brown calf that trotted beside the fence. Miles and miles later, they turned onto their last road and the clouds began to draw close. The sky grew dark, the earth rumbled. Suddenly, the air exploded in bright flashes. Cloud banks traded lightning back and forth, showing off. Wow, an awesome storm that you can see across the flatland. Number nine, Will, Lily whispered. There was no room for other words. The storm took up the whole world, and it filled Lily up too. She was here with Graham, and for a whole minute, that was all that mattered. On they drove, almost there, not far now. When they'd been almost there for a long, long time, Graham braked, eased the car, down a crumbling driveway and parked in front of the farmhouse. Here we be, she said, through the drum of the rain, home. But we only made it to nine, Lily said, slumping in her seat. Nope, 10 easy. Graham came around with the umbrella and Lily stepped out of the car. We're 10, Graham said. Lily sank into her familiar hug. None of this was easy, and maybe it would never be easy. But she belonged to Graham now. She belonged here now. This place wasn't empty, and neither was she. Isn't that sweet? I just love this. And what's our feel-good song that we love to sing after our first book? That's right, skid a rink skid a rink a dink a dink skid a rink a do I love you. skid a rink a dink a dink skid a rink a do I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening. And underneath the moon, oh, skid a rink a dink a dink, skid a rink a do. I love you, cha cha cha. By the way, take a peek at the moon tonight. It's just beautiful. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. See, I'm getting sleepy. Oh, oh, oh. That, that song means it's bedtime to me. <coughs> Unraveled by Leanne Hatch. Here's a little baby wrapped in a bunting. <coughs> the bond was instant. Look at that little baby with his blanket. <coughs> Cole's baby blanket had been lovingly made by Mama while she dreamed of his arrival. Does anyone in your family knit? I wish I knew how to knit. Maybe I should just learn. But there's Mama knitting his baby blanket. Right from the start, Cole adored the softness of the yarn and the feel of the textured edges between his tiny fingers. Aww. As he grew older, he found that the blanket was useful in many ways. Let's see. First it was a baby bunting. Then he would sit on the blanket and play with his toys. 
And then mommy would play peekaboo behind the blanket. And then he would be a ghost. Then he could carry all his toys and the cat on the blanket. And it became a tent that he could play under. He could put the blanket over his head while he was quietly reading a book, or he could tie it around his neck while he pretended to be a superhero. Cole and his blanket were inseparable. But Cole began to notice that his blanket appeared to be getting smaller, and not just because he was getting bigger. It was becoming unraveled until one day the blanket no longer resembled a blanket. It was all unraveled and was squiggly yarn. Cole was not sure what to do now that his blanket was nothing more than a pile of tangled yarn. He depended on his blanket. He tried to use it in all the ways he did before. He tried to sleep under it. He tried to play with it. He tried to play peekaboo with it. And here he is. He couldn't even put it over his head. He couldn't carry his toys on it. It didn't make a good tent. It didn't cover his head while he read books, and it was useless as a superhero cape. It just wasn't the same. One night at dinner time, Cole made a very big decision. Look what he's eating. He's eating tangled up spaghetti, just like his tangled up blanket. It was time to let go. Here, Mommy, I'm letting go of my blanket. But Mama wasn't quite ready yet. She had an idea. Look at her idea. Her idea is knitting needles. For the next few nights while Cole slept, she knit something new. When she finished, she snuck into his room while he slept. Now here is Cole sleeping and look at all his dreams. He dreamed that he was riding his bicycle, that he was playing with his puzzle, that he was playing with his paints. He was dreaming of such a wonderful day and I hope that's what you'll be dreaming tonight, your wonderful day. When Cole woke up in the morning, a surprise was hanging on his closet door. It was soft with textured edges. And it fit just right. Ooh, look at he's feeling how soft it is. The bond was instant. The blanket has a new life. The end. Just love that book. You can borrow this because I'm returning it. It'll be on the new bookshelf in the children's room. Oh, um, gee whiz. I have another story, but I think it's getting close to getting ready for bed. Go hippity hop to bed. I'd rather stay up instead. When mother says must, there's nothing but just go hippity hop to bed. Ah. Don't you love going to Lily White's party? You don't have to get dressed up, but it's awesome to wear new, soft, winter pajamas. So, after you maybe take a bath, um, this is the way we take our bath, take our bath, take our bath. This is the way we take our bath before we go to bed. This is the way we comb our hair, comb our hair, comb our hair. This is the way we comb our hair before we go to bed.
This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth before we go to bed. This is the way we blow a kiss, blow a kiss, blow a kiss. This is the way we blow a kiss before we go to bed. Yeah, so you put on those nice warm jammies. They're new and they're soft and getting into those lily white sheets and go to lily white's party and that sheets smell nice and fresh and uh it's all good nighttime is good so and since it's dark guess who comes into the sky right away it's twinkle mm -hmm. first star up there and last star to leave in the morning starlight star bright First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Any good wishes floating around out there? Um, I don't know. I, I wish for a trip to Disney World. I like to go to Disney World. Um, I think that'll be my big wish. Okay. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. What is Twinkle? He's just a big ball of fun, right? Do you think Twinkle's happy? Look at his smiling face. All right, Twinkle, we'll see you in the morning. Um, speaking of smiling faces, here's our last book. It's called The Smile Shop. And uh, it's written by Satoshi Kitamura. Let's see where he comes from. Doesn't really say. Oh, he lives in Japan. So you'll notice that Maybe the marketplace or the streets look a little bit different than our uh, places here because he's a little boy in Japan. The Smile Shop by Satoshi Kitamura. And here's the little boy. Almost like, it almost looks like New York City uptown or way uptown. I'm so excited, the little boy said. I have saved all my pocket money, and today I'm going to buy myself something for the very first time. Isn't he cute? He's got a pocket full of coins. He's going to buy something for himself. The market is very busy. Now look at this marketplace with all these people. Everyone is looking at something. They're not looking at each other at all. They're either looking at their feet where they're walking or the baby in the stroller or at their telephone in their hand or something over their shoulder. They're not looking at each other. There are so many shops and stalls with such wonderful colors. There's the fruit and vegetable shop and tempting smells. Mmm, wonder what that, that is. That apple pie looks tasty. Ah, oh, that's the bakery. I wonder which clock is telling the right time in the clock shop. Oh, what a beautiful little boat in the toy store. It's quite expensive though. This book seems really interesting. He's in a bookstore. Look at all those books. You can borrow books for free at the library. 
Wow, I can make a sound on this horn. That's in the instrument store. I like this hat. It suits me head to toe. So let's see. That kind of looks like kind of like an antique type of whatnot shop with old things. But the hat does look cute on him. Now I must decide what to buy. So here are all the people in the marketplace. And take a look at this person on the skateboard. Do you think it's really wise to be skating on the sidewalk and such in the middle of such a busy downtown? And all of a sudden, it happens. He crashes into the little boy. What? Oh, no. My money has fallen down the drain. Only one coin is left. I haven't enough to buy anything now. As he's walking down the sidewalk, he sees a sign above a shop that says, Smile. Smile? Is this a smile shop? Do they sell smiles here? A smile is probably what I need, although I don't feel like smiling. He went into the shop. Excuse me, I say to the man behind the counter. I have very little money, but could I buy a smile, please? A little one, perhaps? I'm afraid we don't sell smiles here, sir, the man replies. But I thought you were a smile shop, I whisper. Well, we call our store Smile, the man goes on, but a smile is not something that money can buy. He stops talking and looks at me, and then a smile is really something you can only exchange and share. And he smiles a big smile. So I smile too. The man takes a picture of me smiling and he gives the photo to me. We exchange smiles again and wave goodbye. I think it was a camera store or a photography shop. And now that I'm on the street, I see that everyone is smiling. He's looking at his picture. The whole world is smiling. People are smiling at each other. And they're smiling with me. Isn't that a sweet story? I like that one. Guess what? You can get it at your library. I'll make sure it's on the shelf. Oh, so I guess, um, let's see what time is it. Let's see. Yeah, we're winding down. You're, you're getting sleepy too, I can tell. Um, oh, I should have said that word. That would sleep you a lot. Okay. So, day is done, gone the sun, from the land, from the hills, from the sky. All is well, safely rest, sleep is nigh. Remember that word means near, nigh. People use it because it rhymes with stuff. Day is done, gone the sun. From the land, from the hills, from the sky, all is well, safely rest, sleep is nigh. And once the sun goes down, guess who comes out? Wee Willie Winky. I don't know why. His name is Willie. That's kind of a nickname for William. We means a little boy, little. We, a wee thing. He's a wee thing. Wee Willie Winky. 
Wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs, in his nightgown. He's got a nightgown on. He's also got a sleeping cap. That's because in the old days, people did not have heat in their bedrooms, and they had to wear a hat to bed to keep them warm. And I'm here to tell you, I used to sleep in a cold room, and I wore a hat, and it kept me warm all night. Or if you're camping or in the car, you wear a hat, and it keeps you warm. Wee Willy Winky runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. Peering through the windows, peeping through the locks. He's peeping through the lock, peeping with his eye. Are the children in their beds? It's almost eight o'clock. So Wee Willy Winky, and then the Sandman comes by to sprinkle sand in your eyes, and then you really have to close your eyes and go to sleep. So here's my song for you. Uh, thank you for coming to Storytime. I wish you a wonderful night's sleep and uh, wake up refreshed and ready to run out and greet your day tomorrow with open arms and a big hug. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Good night, sweet dreams. I love you, and I'll see you next time.